Okay, starting up again. Okay, so let's let's go over some of this stuff. Now, now we're in the okay. So now we have um, a while back this John Tatlow um, wrote that journal. Okay, and John Tatlow even talks about all four of his grandparents in his in both his journal and a separate journal. But we're right now I'm focusing on since Charles Carr, so I don't want to get too far back up on the other tree. Let's get back here to Charlotte Tatlow. Okay. Um, the birth date for Charlotte Tatlow comes straight out of John Tatlow's diary in a different entry. Okay, I've said, and he said she was born at Tremora in Cavan County. She ended up dying uh, 27th November 1854 at Torquay, and the only reason why I don't have a parish burial reg record out of Torquay and Devon, why? Because of that same English copyright problem. I really think it's a problem. Information that is so old it can only be used for research purposes. I see no reason why to be copywritten and sold for profit. It's just a, it's just a, a grab. But I got that death date from um, a search in Google Books, um, and a combination between that and um, the wills that are available at the British National Archives. And I'm going to go into a little diatribe about Devon County, and I'm going to uh, birth and death records in Devon County because I'm I'm a little I'm a little annoyed, and my you know a little chapped about it. Um, the epicenter of the, pretty much the epicenter of activity for the Chichester family, at least in Britain, is in Devon County. For the most part, at least up until 1900. And although William Richard Drake, uh, Sir William Richard Drake, who had some Chichester ancestors and worked, tried to revise the history of family of Chichester based upon what he believed were serious deficiencies in the book. And I'll have a whole other, I guess I'll do another YouTube video as to what the actual results of his um, criticism were, but for the most part, I don't see much of a deficiency. <laughs> Even though he had some harsh words to say at the end of the day, there wasn't much difference between uh, what he said, but I'm digressing and I'm on a whole other subject, but I'll get back to the Devon County he did a very good job of getting the most, the most I have as far as transcribed birth, death, and marriage records out of Devon County, for Chichester's at least, come by his effort of going to the various parishes and soliciting the, the vicars to, to give him back you know, records, and, and, and he put it in his book as best he could. and. Um, I guess you know I, I am going to get a little deeper into to this um, diatribe here. Now, of course, William Richard Drake couldn't himself go to each and every parish and get all the records. Now, I was able to compare uh, the records he had out of Bishop's Taunton with um, the records that were actually came out of a published list of birth, marriage, and deaths out of Bishop's Taunton that are on Google Books. That's one of the few sets from Devon County that are actually out there and available for people to use. And um, <laughs> there were additional Chichester entries that didn't actually get caught and put into his book. Oh, and even though he was a little critical of the sloppiness of the original books, um, <laughs> the original book's effort to obtain birth, death, and marriage records out of Bishop's Taunton, um, he may have added a little bit more, but he only didn't catch them all. And even this published book, who knows if they caught them all. Okay. Now, now I'm going to take this. I'm going to I'm going to put this in the context of of the records that are up at Scotland's people. I'll tell you what I like what I like about it, what I don't like about it. But I tell you what I'd rather have rather than the situation we're in right now, and also contrast it with access to archives. Right now, the situation in Devon County is this, that if you want a record of one of your ancestors, you want to be able to see an original printout copy of what is microfilmed, um, you have to, 
basically from the United States, write them by postal mail, send them a, maybe a, about anywhere from a very small fee to about $30 a person, and have someone else, not yourself, look through the records for you and report back to you whether they're there. So that assumes they're always going to get it right. They may not. And you already have to know the birth date of this person. Now, what's some, one thing that's very important in genealogy sometimes is being able to look at all the records that are available and find out which one actually applies to your family because you don't, you don't really know. That's the re reason why you want to get the names, as many names of brothers and sisters as you can. So, for example, um, let's say that, well, it, it will actually apply to this Morton um, example here, but... Uh, of course, I've been able to overcome the deficiency in every regard with the fact that Devon County is really unwilling to just simply put their uh, microfilm records up on a web page, make them searchable by index, and allow people to pay maybe five pounds a piece or whatever heck they want to charge for them to download the stinking thing like they do it at Access to Archives and like they do at Scotland. I see no reason for it. All they're doing over down there if Devon County is one, they're um, they're stifling research. They're making it much more tedious to go in there and get records. And two, um, by stifling that research, they're really reducing the amount of fees they're actually going to get, and these churches are going to get. And so the so to me, the the greediness to actually make sure that every single record that's obtained by an individual that's never copied anywhere else to make sure we get every penny for every record that we have in here is causing them to actually collect less and they probably don't even realize it. So sometimes you tighten your grip too hard it ruins it for everybody else. But getting back to this, um, that record for the death record for Charlotte Tatlow one was listed in one of these magazines but I'm also going to now um, show some neater things that I have in my um, archives here that, that to me have more value than some clerk telling me. Um, you know, a family member, uh, not my family, but you know, in the family that, you're, that I'm studying here uh, decided to actually write down a birth date in a journal and keep it and pass it down for 200 years. I doubt it's fabricated, especially when most of those dates are reinforced by publications uh, in the annual register of gentlemen's magazine or the like. Um, sure, some clerk in some county, you know, may not have any incentive to massage dates because they don't want to be as old. You know, some they don't. I'm not. People don't want to say they're as old as they are, or whatever. But you know, at the end of the day, when it's in the family Bible, you know, that family Bible is usually stuffed away in some box somewhere for no one to to really touch, <laughs> unless the occasion calls for it, and uh, it's for posterity's sake. And I don't see any more authority or any higher authority being rested upon. Um, records that would come out of a county to very I'm not going to bother going to the county to find out and the little, little church there to find out whether you know the, the dates that Pierce Morton wrote down in his journal match them to exactly you know especially when I have corroborating evidence from other things like the you know the only thing I need to do is I need to have a reasonable sense that uh, the scanned Bible records that I'm about to show are authentic, just just as a, to be impartial and to be in, uh, the the truth to being independent is not accepting everything that you get, but not rejecting things out of hand either, and so it's it's just a standard level of reasonableness. And you look at you can look at the appearance of the um, of, of the pages as they were scanned. The, the pin, the corroborating evidence, and other other records that are there. This clearly is is authentic. These were saved by the Howard branch, the Morton family. There was a daughter of of Savile Edward Morton and Maria Collins that married uh, a Howard, and they're Howard descendants to this day. And I'll, I have some pretty neat things to show.